This is the ANET 10. This printer was built during a live stream in a relatively short amount of time. This is an all aluminum frame printer from ANET, a Far East company in China. The E10 is a standard Cartesian style printer with a larger build volume than most standard kits. This one has a 220 by 270 by 300 millimeter volume, a strangely placed MK8 style extruder with a Bowden tube that goes to an oddly shaped hot end, an aluminum 3 millimeter heated bed with a build tack like sheet to go on top, and a part cooling fan. I have been printing on this one like crazy, and I have to admit, I kind of like it. It does have a few issues, and there's some things to watch out for, but with these features and this build volume, it's definitely a contender in this price range. So let's get into it. Here's the good stuff. The build volume, of course. And on this one, the frame is sturdy enough and the bed is flat enough to print this large. I was able to print out this whole tray of parts and all of them came out pretty well. No failures. Again, the aluminum frame is pretty sturdy and it prints pretty well with a few mods that we'll get into in a minute. I also like the screen on this one. It's a nice size and the firmware is pretty intuitive. The printer is fairly easy to build and I like that they use some printed parts in a couple of spots. The printer's mechanical movement is fairly quiet with some chunky rubber feet on the bottom. It has two lead screws for the Z-axis and I like the bed leveling knobs as well. They are easy to use. I usually don't care for the sidecar electronics box, but this one seems to be nice and sturdy. The price is also attractive at 300 US with free shipping. Possibly the largest build volume for the money. And the bed. The paper manual they give you with this printer really isn't enough to get you up in printing. There is a different version of the manual and a video on the SD card, and if you use all three, you can probably get it together but it's going to take some guessing and a little trial and error. I tried to build the printer as close to the documents as I could, but without a little further guidance, mistakes can be made. For instance, the Bowden tube was way too long and it mentions nothing about cutting it down in the manual. This is the cut down version that I replaced it with. Next, the Bowden tube is not the right size for 1.75 millimeter filament. It's not going to give you good prints. Toss it and get some good stuff. Again, with cheaper printers, they use the wrong size barrel. As a matter of fact, it uses the same wrong size Bowden tube as its PTFE insert. Get rid of it, it's more trouble than it's worth. You can get five barrels from Amazon for about $8 US. Same shiny rubber belts, but they seem to work. You'll start to see some wear on the wheels because they might not fit in the T-channel just right. Keep an eye on them and tighten them up once in a while and you should be okay. This kit has a larger bed plug, but I would still consider soldering the wires direct just to be safe. After you build your kit, check your couplers and drive gears. I noticed that not all the grub screws were on the flat piece of the motor shaft. This could cause issues later. And the most annoying part of all, the Z motors were installed with the plugs facing inward. The bottom of the heat bed will collide with these plugs if left this way, so you'll need to turn the motor 90 degrees to correct this. Take a look at this heat sink for the hot end. The barrel's just held in here by this grub screw. There's no threads for the barrel to go into. These have a tendency to come out with heat. If it does come out, you'll have a serious problem on your hands. But so far, so good. There's probably a better solution for this that would be fairly easy to implement. So what's in the box? It's a 12 volt power supply, a nice looking full graphics LCD display, and a red ANET controller board like the other ANET printers. The fans on the box are pretty noisy, adding a lot of noise to the unit as a whole. The firmware is still proprietary, so you can't make changes, but it's so far the easiest version of ANET software I've used. Now the prints. The first print suffered from extruder skipping and retraction issues greatly. After I replaced the barrel and Bowden tube, the print got much better, seen here. No more skipping and retraction issues were much improved. After a quick slicer tweak of a 2mm retraction rate at 40mm a second, the print is very impressive. I did many prints on this machine. Almost all of them came out flawless. Some very large ones as you can see. Check out this rocket. The finish is very smooth. So no matter if this printer is a direct copy of another one or not, for 300 bucks, you get a large build volume that's easy to put together, a sturdy frame, and with a few sub-$5 mods, you can get some pretty nice and consistent prints. 
With a little care in feeding, you could have a workhorse here. Your mileage may vary. The inconsistencies from kit to kit can be great, but with this one, very few complaints so far. This printer was purchased from the GearVest website with my own funds and all opinions expressed are my own. GearVest has been kind enough to give me an affiliate link and a discount code if you'd like to get your own E10 while helping out this channel at the same time. Please see the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below and thanks for watching.